Hi, my name is Sean Plott, or as I'm more commonly known on the internet, I'm Day9. And I took a break from my usual casting of Wings of Liberty to come down here to Blizzard Entertainment and have the chance to cast some Heart of the Swarm Battle Report matches with Rob Simpson. Hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is Sean Day9 Plot from Day9 TV. And I'm Rob Simpson from Blizzard Entertainment, and you are just about to watch a very special battle report for Heart of the Swarm. Now, worth mentioning is that this build is a development build, so not all balance or units in the game are final. We'll still get to see all those new units kicking into action in the ZVP matchup here today, and especially all the differences between the old Wings of Liberty strategy and the brand new Heart of the Swarm strategy. Let's begin by introducing the map. Always the important part of the game, Howling Peaks, has a pretty standard natural expansion right outside your front with a relatively wide choke to defend. And now that choke is going to lead down into the potential third base for said player up here in mm -hmm. the upper right-hand corner of the map. And now you can actually see where this map starts to really open up with the variable attack paths. Yeah, I mean, there is a center to the map, but it's broken up into a lot of pieces. And even the, these little features, such as the destructible rocks, you can take those out and open up a new attack path to another expansion. Even your own natural expansion has this backdoor counterattack path, meaning you have to be aware of an attack coming from any angle at any point in time. And now moving down this ramp, we see what most players on this map have been taking as their fourth base. Now, mm -hmm. worth noting about this area of the map is that not only is it in a small, lowered area, but also over here on the left side is the collapsible rock tower. Now, when you deal 500 damage to this collapsible rock tower, it lands and changes into destructible rocks. So that's a great way to create a temporary defense for that expansion. Another expansion up in the top left. I don't think it's as important that there is an expansion here, but more so that there are more attack paths all relatively narrow. You can cover them with this watchtower to see what's coming from where, but plenty of action available in the center. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, this is the center of the map, but as you can see, it's not a, just a big wide open battle area. There mm -hmm. are so many ways to attack the center of the map and pass through. So if you had to describe the map in one sentence, it would be a big map with a lot of different ways to attack. And as we can see, the Zerg player pretty much going to be opening in that standard Wings of Liberty fashion. Most of the Zerg tech is late layer or early hive, so it's the late game where we'll get to see the Zerg really shine. Right, so here over on the Protoss side, you can also see that the first several minutes of the game will be very similar, but Protoss have access to a unit relatively early in the game called the Mothership Core. Yeah, we'll, we'll be getting a chance to see the Mothership Core in a sec, assuming that, of course, the Protoss player doesn't want to abandon all reason and not <laughs> right. get it. But, you know, it's kind of uh, significant to note that all the threats that existed in Wings of Liberty obviously still exist mm -hmm. in Heart of the Swarm. Those early Ling Roach Baneling all-ins, still a threat. Uh, a Zerg triple expanding when you early expand as Protoss, still a threat. So we are, of course, seeing the Protoss player build those early cannons, those early gates, and we are, of course, seeing the Zerg build the early double queen. That's right, and now back over here in Protoss Land, we have that first couple cannons being thrown down in addition to his gateway, yeah. just about wrapping up. And now up in the main, we can see that the Zerg player has a little bit more information on his opponent, uh -huh. but not too much given how early in the game it is. Yeah, Protoss floating right on in. Or excuse me, the Overlord from Zerg floating right on in, seeing everything Protoss has. And I like the fact that we're seeing Protoss build those two cannons because it's pretty difficult to cover all the wide open space at the natural expansion alone. Oh, and now take a look at that new queen graphic. Mm, yeah, and of course, when you hover over the hatchery, you can also see how many workers are attached to it, so you don't have to manually count 5 of 24, as of course the optimum worker amount is 16 on minerals, 3 on each gas. And Oh, and what's this? Looks like, oh, oh, it's the Mothership Core. And this, a brand new, I guess, structure slash unit. It's attached to the Nexus and it has a variety of ability, abilities. Teleport allows it to move to another Nexus. Energize for 25 energy. You can remax the energy on another unit. And now it also has Purify. It powers up the Mothership Core and lets it gain a powerful attack, effectively turning it into something like a cannon. Now it also has the Mass Recall ability, yeah. which recalls all units owned by the player back 
back to that Nexus. And of course, the upgrade to Mothership. If you love the Mothership from Wings of Liberty, it's still here. Rather than being built out of the Nexus, the Mothership core turns into the Mothership itself. But that Mothership core is so pivotal since you can use it to re-energize sentries in the early game, helping you hold Ooh. off those early all-ins. Now, there have been some fancy new animations added in Heart of the Swarm. You can see how the creep spreads through the snake-like... <laughs> Thing, thing. The veiny new creep tumor animation just to make things a little bit more snazzy third base now going down for the pro or for the zerg and again i want to emphasize that for the zerg player you're going to be doing a pretty wings of liberty-esque somewhat early layer focusing on the roachling um we still see that this mothership core also provides another layer of defense and the Overlord is going to try to get in, see as much as it can, but it gets picked off. Well, now it knows the Mothership Core is there, so who won who? So now <laughs> we actually have this Stargate up here. Started for the Protoss player, and he's also just about to finish up his plus one attacks. And the Protoss player is staying active on the map, getting as much information now finding that third base. Yeah, you know, I would say that, uh, you know, we almost describe the Terran as being pretty much all factory focused in uh, Heart of the Swarm. Mm -hmm. In Heart of the Swarm for Protoss, it's a lot more air focused. The new units are built out of the Stargate for that Protoss player, so I'm very excited to see uh, what's going to be popping out of Protoss soon enough. But at this point in time, Zerg now maxing out on all those gas geysers and starting to tech up. Oh, and now if we take a look, that's an Oracle. Now, the Oracle is a brand spanking new flying caster for the Protoss Armory. Also, another new one is the Tempest. Tempest, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be constructed this game, but it can be upgraded to have 22 range. That's like 50 siege tanks robbed. You can assault <laughs> things from such an absurd range. Oh, man, and when combined with the Oracle, the Oracle can use Preordain, which places vision and detect it on a building, so that enables the Tempest to fire from super long range oh, of harass. I'm really excited to see some of the new Oracle abilities. We're also looking at some of the new Zerg units. The Swarm Host is layer tech, so when that infestation pit is done, there we see the Swarm Host's availability, and now the Oracle moves so quickly across the map Map. It's sort of a harassment spellcaster. One of the abilities, as you were saying, preordain gives vision on any building at all. There's entomb, which locks down minerals, preventing the opponent from mining. And of course, the cloaking field, which allows you to cloak all your nearby units. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here comes entomb. Oh, and he's got just enough energy to get in there. And you can see the entomb go down. Now, entomb is not permanent. As you can see, all of those mineral shields have HP, which means that you always need to be aware of your mining. That's true. It basically tr turns each mineral patch into a gingerbread house and the little drones have to gobble it down and there they're finally starting to collapse. But an effective way to lock down all the Zerg mining, we see a second oracle. Very different from the, Zer uh, the typical Protoss harass of the Void Ray Phoenix. A very annoying way to shut down oh. all the economy for Zerg. Oh. And there's another nice entomb on the minerals. Now, as you can see, what's been a common response to the Oracle harassment is to lay down a couple of spine crawlers because those uh -huh. spine crawlers will automatically attack the mineral shields, whereas your drones will not. So it looks like we are seeing those spine crawlers take it all down. Zerg finally going back to mining. Stalkers coming out. Of course, the core mix of Stalker Sentry, very common in the mid game. But that's all boosted by the fact that there is the Mothership Core. You can add on tons of energy. If you were Zerg and were frustrated with force fields, don't worry because now you can get those sentries back to max energy so you can face even more. We thought that would be important to you. That's right. We know just how much you love to face force fields. And so now we have the Protoss player getting up in here, playing a little bit of harass, taking down one of those spine crawlers, going in for a second one. We can see that the Zerg player really doesn't have a whole lot of answers to this. There's that lone queen out there beautifully trying to oh. fire away. Oh, but the swarm hosts have arrived, and uh, oh, those locusts are closing in on the Protoss force. And there the locusts now, an extremely powerful siege unit, the oh. swarm hosts are. We see some of those force fields thrown down, but those locusts, extremely thin units, very much so like zerglings in their size, can slip through any misplaced force fields with ease, oh. and even though that expansion fell down, oh, well, and pulls the recall. out the units with the recall. That is the Mothership Core in action. Now, the one thing to note about that mass recall, it might seem super powerful to rush into an expansion and then to retreat, but mass recall is 150 energy. It saps almost all the energy out of that mothership core for another three minutes. 
So that's right. And not only that, to use. but you can only have one mothership core. Mm -hmm. Exactly like the mothership in that regard. We do see the two oracles on the minimap spread out. Looks like Zerg is planting a line of spine crawlers and swarm hosts, and it has the hydrals there to deal extra damage. I mean, a lot of people talk about the roach as being the unit that absorbs the damage, and the hydrals being the one that oh. deal it. Well, locusts and hydras, a great way to push these back, and the locusts are free. They're generated from the wow. swarm hosts, so now we see space being controlled very well by Zerg, and Protoss is a little bit on the retreat. That's right, so if you're able to land your locusts in the center of the map and control space, yeah. Now, we also saw that the Protoss player, because those Locusts were closing on him, he actually had to use some of his energy mm -hmm. to defend from those free units. But now the Protoss player moving around the center of the map, just as we oh. said, there's so many places to attack, but uh-oh, it's looking like the Zerg is ready with Hydras. Oh, this is a really risky engagement because we see those Hydras are on creep, which means that they are going to be moving very fast. And we see a huge swath of those um, oh. swarm host locusts popping out. The swarm host locusts take 25 seconds for another round to pop out. So it looks like for a brief period of time, the Protoss player will be able to retreat there. Those locusts now evaporating, but another round is coming soon, no doubt. Oh, man, and the stalkers and sentries are forced to completely abandon as the Protoss player now gets out there and establishes his fourth base. Now, amidst all the madness, we have seen that the Protoss player is pretty much up to three bases right about now. But uh -oh, now the uh -oh. Zerg is on the assault. Oh, it looks like the Swarm Host Hydralis composition is going to have to wait for those locusts to pop up so then he can attack in a wave. He's going to move forward with the Hydras, start to deal that damage, and he's going to retreat oh. the instant that those locusts pop out. We see the locusts slowly evaporating, but this fourth base expansion attempt is likely to fall and the hydras whoa look how fast the hydras are that is the brand new hive tech speed upgrade for those hydralists that's right those speedy hydras enable them to engage from much better angles much quicker they can also get in and attack and pull out of the battle much faster as well and now we see just how effective those locusts truly are moving in those free units and having them absorb all of the attacks while the hydras take down the nexus oh and they get the nexus and the next round of locusts pop out in slow mass numbers, the locusts continue Whoa, to invade. And where did that come from? That cannon is the mothership purifier mm -hmm. ability. No, oh, that no, was that's the Tempest. The Tempest. Tempest? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I just saw a long range shot coming from nowhere. Look how speedy those hydras are closing in on that Tempest very quickly. They're off creep, but look at them close that gap. Ooh, Tempest trying to get away. Oh, the most expensive air unit for Protoss is going to fall. We see one Tempest <laughs> is there. Just slowly, quietly one-shotting, and there's the preordained to get the bonus vision on that hatchery. Protoss can now see everything around that hatchery. He's using a long-range Tempest to slowly pick off all the nearby buildings. Oh, man, and that Tempest is just so far out of reach for the Zerg player right now, but the Zerg doesn't care. He is on the move. Here we have all of those swarm hosts, Vipers, and Hydras moving around the right side of the map, getting mm -hmm. ready to assault the Protoss player's third. Viper, another flying spellcaster for Zerg, does have that abduct ability, the ability to grab one unit and bring it close. It does also have the ability to consume to get more energy. And now, not to be discounted, is the Blinding Cloud. It reduces oh, yeah. range weapons to one and it only works on oh, biological yes. units but now we have the zerg player landing in those swarm hosts and starting to use those locusts to lay waste to the protoss third oh we do see that oracle that was initially used for harassment now going to be able to cloak all those oh. units a great ability from the oracle the oracle looks like zerg does not have any detection oh, and, oh tries to go for the abduct accidentally whiffs the oracle we'll have to go for a oh. second round in there and manages to pick it off we do see that mothership core has teleported to that bottom nexus made turn into the purifier beam and there it is becoming a massive cannon and now the Vipers are over there biding their time, just waiting for the right opportunity to once again get in there and abduct a few of those Protoss units. And now we see yet another warping round coming out from the Protoss player, although those Zealots are just falling at the hands of the Locusts. God, the Locusts are just so powerful, Rob, especially backed by the Hydralis with their fast ability to micro. We see the Tempest does have the range upgrade. It is firing from oh. so far away. Oh, oh. <laughs> abducting that Colossus. Oh. We'll try to go for the retreat.
Oh man, and the Speedy Hydras were trying to get in there, but they didn't want to risk the line of fire. Oh, but once again, are we going to be able to see that Colossus be finished off by those Hydralists? Now we have a bit more of the Stalkers and Zealots, but they're only fighting the free units. They still aren't eliminating the threat right now. The Tempests are now in position to focus down those Swarm Hosts. Great positioning there by the Protoss, working away at the Swarm Hosts with the sickening range of the Tempest. They're slowly eliminating them. Protoss will no doubt be able to finally deflect this attack Whoa. so long as he can just hold on a little bit longer. But those free locusts being generated by the swarm host are slowly dwindling the probe count. And of course, oh, 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 once another again, nice abducted. abducted. Very nice play from the Zerg player and getting in with those Locusts and those Hydras to follow up and finish off that Colossus. And now it's looking like the Zerg player almost has full control of this expansion. Oh gosh, right when the Swarm Host got cleaned out. Oh. The Hydralis army just got a little bit too great. We even see four more Vipers in production to try to help with that abductability. Even abducting a Stalker or two would be fantastic at this point in time as they are continuing to try to run. And there's the abduct Whoa. on the Tempest! Oh, oh, getting man. eaten alive by those Hydralists. They were trying to hide with their range for so long, but could not quite stay defended that much longer. And now the Protoss player is starting to push back the Zerg threat, but his base out here, his expansion is just in shambles. I'm not going to lie, Colossus were good against Hydras and Wings of Liberty. They are still good against Hydras. In Heart of the Swarm, that Hydra line is completely decimated. And now we see the Zerg player staying active with those speedy Hydralists moving a yes. around to once again deny Absolutely. that expansion. Oh, but just as you said, those Colossi are frying the Hydras, especially with that Tempest backup fire. And you know, it's so key to note that the Hydralists now, as a late game unit, are used for counterattack, used for harassment, the way that roaches or lings once were. But more importantly, the Hydralists are a extremely potent uh, force in any direct engagement as well. Thanks to that speed, thanks to the swarm host. Protoss now trying to do some harass attack, dealing damage to that top left hatchery with whatever it can. Very oh, small wow. mix of units, but look at the range on those Tempests. Jeez, that's crazy to see in action. Man, they are just hammering down on this expansion. The Zerg player is scrambling to get over there, and he has Ultralis now in his composition as well. Now, Ultralis have the charge ability. It's Burrow Charge. It can close such a large gap and briefly knock up and distract units as they close that distance. The Vipers do want to get in position and cast that Abduct to snatch up the Tempest, to snatch up the Colossus. But, oh, the Oracle still being used to entomb all of these mineral fields, try to shut down the mining. Those remaining swarm hosts that ate away the bottom base now slowly trying to work on the Protoss Natural. Oh, man, and the Zerg player we can see is just trying to establish map control to the best yeah, of his yeah. ability right now. Both these players really just vying for the economic game. Now, as we can see, those Swarm hosts just really getting the bang for the buck for the Zerg player and just preventing that Protoss from doing what he wants. Oh, man, and those Locusts are just hammering down once again as the Tempests finish him off. Gosh, the range on those Tempests is just absurd. In the meantime, the Zerg is now starting to get into another big engagement. Where are the Vipers? Where are the Vipers? There's the big burrow Whoa. charge from the Ultras, allowing them to get right up in the face of those Colossi. The big damage Whoa. dealers used to hiding in the back, but hide they can Whoa. no longer getting pulled right into the thick of things. All oh, the Colossus get pulled back. Ultralisk, oh, Duct, Corruptor, everything eats those Colossus alive. The Tempest trying to do their best. Oh, but once again, just getting pulled into the army, and we can see those Corruptors just finish them off as the Vipers bring them into the clutches of the Zerg Force. And there we see the Purifier on the Mothership Core, allowing it to blast down those Ultralists swiftly, oh. but Protoss base count is looking mighty thin at this point, Rob. It most certainly is. We can actually see that, I mean, the Protoss player is just fighting to hang on to the game. Oh, and once again, that slithering creep tumor animation moving out there. And wow, this whole time, the Protoss player has stayed so active with those oracles, making sure to do whatever he can to stay in the economic game. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard when you're low on the bases and Zerg's high on the aggression to have an answer. The Oracle is that answer, but it's still only temporary. Mm -hmm. And especially when your opponent has just drastically more bases than you as well, it's, it's going to be very hard for you to stay in just on the heels of the Oracle.
And at this point in time, the Zerg with that really high gas count could transition into some more infestors. Of course, the Broodlord's always an option, but that Hydra abduct combo is much more well suited for the mobile Zerg. And we're also seeing the Protoss, who's running a little bit low on cash himself, is starting to go for some gas heavy units, trying to establish some kind of control in the center. And it looks like there is an engagement in the center as all the Hydralists rush up. Hydra's same speed on creep and off. Oh, well, and now once again, we have the Hydras again going oh. to finish off the Nexus as we see a couple of abducts pulling back the Colossi into the Zerg force and the Corruptors are able to get in there and finish it off. And once again, another pull just getting those Colossi a little bit out of position for the Corruptors to clean up. But the Protoss is pushing the Zerg back. Oh, was only able to do it for a little bit oh. longer, but now the expansion falls. And Protoss is scrambling to try to get to the southern base to reestablish control of that. Might want to take out the collapsible rock tower. Zealots do engage against those building spine crawlers, but the, the double headbutt combo proves too, too strong for the Zealot. <laughs> Does look like the Hydras take down the assimilator. The expansion is cleaned out. And gosh, I mean, Hydra, Viper with the swarm host it's just so good at slowly breaking those lines but as you were saying rob the oracle is just non-stop harassment yeah staying active with that unit can just be so valuable i mean every time that you're able to land the shields onto those minerals that's guaranteed harassment mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether or not they're fast on the reaction it's still some small amount of mining time that they won't be able to access and now the hydra is starting to dart forward it looks like there we do see the mothership core is in purifier mode starting to deal massive damage to those hydras easily able to two shot but no the mothership core goes down no mothership energize teleport recall none of it now the protoss is desperately going for some sort of counter attack against the zerg who's looking surprisingly low on minerals oh man and we actually so as we see the zerg player try to establish some sort of defensive line across the center of the map it seems as though the protoss player has gotten there just a few seconds too soon for the zerg player to defend and those spine crawlers are falling left Left and right before they're able to burrow. The Immortals dealing massive damage to all the armored buildings, but Hydralis are a light unit type. Oh. And that is largely the mix that we are seeing out of Zerg. And we see another nice abduct allowing him to pick off those High Templar. No storm for you soon. And there's another abduct on the Archon, able to escape safely, though. Oh, pulling the Archon back into the clutches of death. <laughs> yes. The good old yoink move continues to pick off those Archons one at a time. And now we see the probes even trying to surround the Hydras. But my god, are they fast. But the oh, Protoss no. force a little bit too much. And due to the nonstop harassment oh. from the Protoss player with that Entomb, it's looking more and more like the Zerg player might actually fall in this game. Oh man, and in comes yet another assault from all of these Zealots moving up into that upper left expansion, finishing off what is left of these two spine crawlers, and now those drones are free for the picking. Uh, I actually don't believe it. Did Protoss uh -oh. actually pull this off? I mean, the number of abducts that were going mm -hmm. on, snatching up all those valuable colossi, but I mean, the Viper, so expensive at 200 gas, even if you invest in three Vipers. That's mm -hmm. four infestors you couldn't build. That's a full set of upgrades. That's a, almost 12 hydralists that you want, are suddenly not able to build. Right. We also saw that the Zerg army really ended up being largely comprised of those caster units, but not units that could deal damage to everything. We saw just that large group of Vipers and Corruptors be destroyed by all those stalkers and archons down at the bottom. And now that assault has continued. Oh, the income is so low for the Zerg player right now. That Oracle is really paying off. Incredible job on the Oracle. I wish there was a little counter of how much <laughs> money he's hurt the Zerg player. <laughs> and now we see the Hydralis on the creep chasing down those relatively slow Protoss units. Nice little rearrangement micro there. Oh, the Hydralis without oh, the support of the Swarm Hosts are a lot weaker though. They're falling very rapidly and it looks like Protoss making a big push up the center lane. Oh wow, and the Zerg player just doesn't have enough left to defend from this. We can see if there's only four Hydralis back there and oh, now the Stalkers no! additionally are adding in destroying this next oh zerg just had such an edge there in the mid game oh. but the swarm host the vipers the hydra is so oh. expensive the good game and protoss is able to take an extremely extremely close win
So we hope you got the chance to enjoy this new showcase of strategy and units in Heart of the Swarm. I'm Day 9. And I'm Rob Simpson. Thanks for watching.